you should be looking up every single item you buy. Don't immediately just go out and buy a bunch of stuff. Once you kind of start to get activity on eBay, you will get more activity on eBay. So one of the questions I get a lot is, what are your best tips for beginners? I do have a beginners video, which I will link um, down below. But I did want to give my best tips for anyone starting on eBay as a beginner. Hi, my name is Eileen. Welcome to my channel, Hustle and Slow. Um, you can see here I'm kind of in a weird background. If you didn't know or if you're not someone that has been following my videos, we live full time in a travel trailer and we have for about five, six, five months now. Um, and we are actually staying at family's house renovating. So I'm in the trailer trying to get away from all the noise from the kids. And um, I'm sitting on the floor because we're renovating and it's kind of a mess. So this is the background we have. I think it's okay. Um, but I just wanted to explain why I'm sitting on the floor of my trailer. But uh, my name is Eileen and I am a work at home mom and an entrepreneur. We are a full time RV family and we are full time self employed, which means um, I am the breadwinner in the family and my husband is a stay at home dad. And all of our income comes from um, different streams that we have built up over the last couple of years. So one stream of income that we did have for a long time that we no longer have is reselling, but I've done it for so long that I still have plenty of tips for those of you who want to get started and it will always be something that I'm doing. Um, I'm doing it very part time now because living in a travel trailer and traveling full time, you don't exactly have space to keep all of your inventory. But I did want to share some of my best tips with you. So these tips are more for beginners. So if you haven't started selling on eBay yet, or maybe you have and you are just kind of new still, um, these tips are for you. So the first tip is to start with what you have. Don't immediately just go out and buy a bunch of stuff from a yard sale or from a thrift store. Start with what you have around the house, even stuff that you're not going to sell. Um, because a big part of selling on eBay successfully is knowing what is actually selling so that you can go out and use that knowledge when you're outsourcing for inventory in the future. So um, start with stuff around your house. Uh, maybe declutter a little bit if that's something that you feel like you need to do sometime soon. You can grab stuff out of your closet that you haven't worn or stuff around the house that you haven't been using and see if any of that is worth anything on eBay. Of course, if you can sell it or if it's something that you're not going to use, go ahead and list it if it's worth anything. Um, but you can also just use stuff that you are using and use that as research. So you don't necessarily have to sell everything that you're researching, but I really recommend just spending some time researching and looking stuff up on eBay to see what people are selling it for, how they're doing their pictures and their descriptions, how they're shipping the items, stuff like that, just so you have a better idea of what you're doing and you're not just kind of jumping in with no information. My next tip is to use good keywords. People on eBay are going to be searching for your item or for items, and you wanna make sure that you're using terms that they're going to be using when they're searching. So. Um, making sure you're utilizing all of the space in the title field and making sure that you're using words that people are actually going to search when they're searching for your, an item like yours is so important because that's the only way they're going to find your stuff. For example, using things like the brand name, the style, color, stuff like that. Those are things people are going to be searching for and you want to make sure that you have all of that in the title so that they can find your item and buy it. The next tip is to let things go for cheap at first. Um, it's a little hard because you obviously want to make as much money as possible, but when someone starts a new account, I always recommend that they start selling things even for a little bit less than what's a competitive price if they want to get started moving things quickly. Um, once you kind of start to get activity on eBay, you will get more activity on eBay. It's just kind of how the algorithm works. So if you're having trouble making sales, maybe lower your prices a little bit. And while you might be not making as much in the beginning, um, it will help to gain momentum with your sales. My next tip is if you don't have a lot of feedback, you can buy stuff on eBay and get feedback and it all kind of ends up being in the same number. So your feedback is what shows up to people when they're looking at your listing and they can see your username and next to that they'll see in parentheses um, a number and that will tell them how much feedback you have and how experienced you are. Um, but whether you're buying or selling, you can get feedback and it all goes towards that number. So if you don't have any feedback or your feedback is under like 10, I recommend buying a few things if you have the money um, so that you can increase your feedback and look a little bit more trustworthy to, people, to the people who are buying from you. The next one kind of goes back to selling and looking up what you have. Don't buy a ton of inventory at first. I know it can be really exciting in the beginning because you want to go and buy a bunch of stuff to resell, but when you're a beginner, it can kind of um, get expensive, especially if you're not buying stuff that is really good and it takes time to kind of get that skill and gain all that knowledge about what you should be buying. You should be looking up every single item you buy to make sure you're getting a good profit on it. And that doesn't just mean um, if you find something for $5, you can sell it for 10. 
that doesn't actually leave you with five extra dollars because you have to pay for shipping, you have to pay for fees, you have to pay for supplies, you have to pay for your time, you have to pay taxes in most cases. So you really need to figure out what you want to make on each item and figure out all the fees and everything included in that. So um, you really need to kind of rein it in a little bit at the beginning and not buy too much stuff and start slowly so that you're not wasting your money. Um, a lot of people end up spending a lot of money on stuff in the beginning that they end up not selling or not making a lot of money on and I don't want that to happen to you. So um, buying two or three things at a time when you go to the thrift store or yard sale is a lot better than buying like 20 or 30 things and not being able to sell them because you're putting your money and your time into buying that stuff, listing it, photographing it, all that stuff. So um, just being more careful at the beginning is a really good idea. Going along with that is just spending a lot of time researching what sells. So going into eBay, doing searches on the kind of stuff that you would like to sell and looking at the solds and how different things are selling. If you look up women's tops, there are going to be tops that sell for 99 cents and then there are going to be tops that sell for $200. So it really just depends on what you can find in your area and what you buy. So what you want to do is spend a lot of time just researching. Even if you're just like sitting on the couch watching TV at night, hop on the eBay app and look at what's selling and just kind of expand your knowledge as much as possible because that is what's going to help you be successful in the future is knowing how to source good inventory. And the only way you're going to know how to source good inventory is if you know what's selling and how to look stuff up to see what's selling. The next thing is is to always look for opportunities or always have your mind open to opportunities. A lot of people talk about going to the thrift store or yard sales to find stuff to sell, but there are so many other places you can find inventory. You can find family and friends who are moving, who want to get rid of stuff and they're just going to donate it and maybe you can pick it up and go through it and then donate the rest and give them the receipt if that's what they want. Um, you can check Facebook Marketplace for people who are selling big lots of stuff because they just don't want to deal with selling it individually or taking it to um, the thrift store or donating it themselves. There are so many places that you can be looking for stuff. You can be looking in actual like retail stores, like I've found stuff at Home Depot and Lowe's that I can resell. So just always be on the lookout for stuff that you can sell and the more you are just open to the opportunities that are out there, the more you're going to find that you can sell for a profit. This next one is really important and that is to track your numbers from the beginning. It's really easy to just kind of get into reselling, um, buying stuff, listing it, selling it, shipping it, all that stuff. But if you're not paying attention to your numbers and your profit and how much you're spending, it's going to be really hard for you to know if you're actually making money. It may seem like you're making money if you're selling stuff and then stuff's going, money is going to your bank account and you're using that money to buy more stuff. But sometimes in the end, you find that you're pretty much breaking even or you're making less than minimum wage and that's not worth it. So making sure that you are tracking everything that you buy, how much you're spending, how much you're making, how much you're paying in fees and in shipping and all of that is super important. And while it sounds like a lot, if you start at the beginning when you're just listing a few things here and there, it's a lot less overwhelming than if you grow your store to 200 or 500 items and suddenly you have to catch up. Um, most of us are going to have to pay taxes on this income. So it's better to do it from the beginning and get all your numbers together and be organized from the beginning so that you don't have to play catch up later. One thing I like to do is have Friday finances day where on Fridays is when I kind of catch up with my bookkeeping, pay myself, and just make sure everything is in order. A couple of things I recommend for this is the book Profit First. I recommend this all the time. It's the book that kind of changed everything in my business and changed the way I ran it financially um, so that I could make sure I have all the money I need to run my business but also pay myself fairly. So I highly recommend that book. I will link to it down below if you want to check it out. Um, the second thing I want to recommend is my reseller dashboard. If you're going to be selling on eBay or Poshmark or Mercari, it is a great tool to kind of see what your inventory is, what your sales are, and keep track of all of your things, all of those things individually so that you can see your profit per item and track your cost of goods and all that stuff. I will link to that down below as well. And then I personally use GoDaddy Bookkeeping for tax purposes and all of my transactions from my business account um, just go into there and I categorize them and then I can just send my Schedule C to my accountant at the end of the year and he um, takes care of everything for me. I know some people use QuickBooks. Um, I have not used it or I haven't, I've tried to use it but I'm just so used to GoDaddy Bookkeeping that that's just what I use but there's also QuickBooks, which is a really popular option. My next tip is to honestly just keep it simple at the beginning. Don't try to get too complicated. Don't try to cross post it too many places. Um, you wanna get used to reselling and kind of get a feel for it before you start to get too much into it and do too much because you don't wanna get overwhelmed. Reselling is hard work and it does take a lot of work and it takes 
an investment of your time and your money. So I always recommend just keeping it simple, starting slow, and not jumping in and going crazy from the beginning unless that works for you, I guess. But I think keeping it simple in the beginning is a good idea. The next tip is to include a lot of photos. Your photos should be bright and clear and there should be at least four or five of them. Um, take photos from every angle, of every label, of every um, flaw. Just as many photos as you can take, include all of those because it will just make your buyer feel more comfortable knowing what your item looks like from every angle so that they know there are no extra flaws that you're trying to hide or anything like that. The next tip is to be honest. If there is a flaw on your item, please don't just not say it because you don't want them to not buy the item. You need to be as honest as possible when you're um, selling items. So if there is a snag, like in a shirt, like at the sleeve, just take a picture of it and say there's a small snag. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and you don't want to mislead your buyer into buying something that's in a condition that they're looking for and then have them get it and find out that it has damage or it's just more worn than they expected. So being as honest as possible is really important when you're reselling. People are relying on your words and your opinion in order to make buying decisions. So misleading them is just not the best idea. The next tip is to ship quickly. I know not all of us can get to the post office every single day, but if you can ship within one to two days, that's usually ideal. People are so used to like Amazon's two day shipping and they get really impatient if you can't ship right away. So I recommend shipping every day if you can or every other day if you can't. Um, you can schedule USPS pickups. You can just Google USPS schedule a pickup. And if you're shipping through USPS, you can have them pick up your packages. If you're in an area where you can leave your packages in the mailbox or on your porch and they're going to be safe there. Otherwise, a lot of post offices have drop boxes. So even if they're not open, their main lobby is open and you can just drop your packages after work or before school or whatever your schedule is. And then my last tip is to research when you're pricing. I know it can be tempting to look at what you paid for the item and then price based on that. But there are two problems with that. If you price too high, then it's not likely that your item is going to sell and it's just going to sit there. So the money you spent on that item is just going to go to waste. And if you price too low, you might be missing out on 5, 10, 15 extra dollars that you could be making by being more competitive. So when you're going to list something, I recommend looking up the prices. As you sell more, you might not have to look every single item up because once you work with certain types of items or certain brands, you can kind of gauge what to price it at based on your knowledge. But in the beginning, I really recommend looking up what items like yours are selling for currently, like what they're listed for, and then also what they have sold for. Because what they've sold for recently is a little bit more accurate than what they're listed for, because anyone can list anything for any price. That doesn't mean it's gonna sell. So it's really important to just do research when you're pricing. So those are some extra tips for you if you're just getting started selling on eBay. Of course, I have so many other videos on reselling and making money online in other ways in, on my channel. So if you want any more of those, go ahead and check my channel out and don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and it tells YouTube that it's a good video and it really helps me out. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will do my best to answer them. I try to answer every question that I get. Again, I will link to everything I talked about down below. And I also do have a free eBay training that kind of goes through the beginning stages if you have not even signed up for eBay or if you just signed up and that's pretty much it. You can sign up for that down below. And then I also have a course called the Reseller Roadmap, which is for resellers reselling on eBay and Poshmark. And it kind of walks you through starting a reselling business and everything you need to know to make sure you're um, making all the right decisions and taking all the right steps and doing things like making sure you're pricing correctly, you're sourcing correctly, you're keeping track of everything and have everything streamlined. It's a really great program if you are just getting started reselling and you want kind of some guidance so that you can eliminate the kind of trial and error and the costly mistakes that sometimes we make when we're starting a business. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.